Hi, it's Beamer Zen, and in one of my previous videos I removed the intake manifold from a BMW N43 engine, which is inside the BMW 1 series, and now I'm going to replace some gaskets and reinstall the manifold back onto the engine. I'm also going to install the alternator, the drive belt and the airbox and put everything back into working order. Let's go! First I'm going to replace the intake port gaskets. They're not that hard, but still a good idea to replace them when they're more than 15 years old. New gaskets in. There are two more gaskets here, and the first gasket is an O-ring behind this plate. Here's the O-ring, now I can remove it. Here's the new O-ring from BMW. There's another gasket here at the top. I'm gonna clean it up a little bit. New gasket, again from BMW. I'm going to put a little bit of oil onto the O-ring. And now I can reinstall the plate back onto the manifold. Next I'm going to reinstall the connecting line. I'm also going to insert these rubber bushings and they are two-piece construction and the manifold gets sandwiched between the two rubber parts. And the flange has to point towards the top. And the intake is ready for installation. First, I just want to make sure that all of the wiring is out of the way. I have the fuel line here prepared to be reattached onto the manifold. And I also have this part of the wiring harness to this side so that it's not in the way. And I've also put this wire all the way to the other side so it's not in the way. I'm now ready to put in the manifold and I have to make sure that this hose here fits underneath this part of the wiring harness. It's in, but now I still have to reattach the connector for the CCV hose. So I'm going to tilt the manifold upwards. And now I can seat the manifold back into position. I have to be careful not to lose the rubber mounts here. Now I can install the bolts. And the bolts have to be torqued to 15 newton meters. Now I have to insert the two 13 millimeter bolts. And I have to torque them to 22 newton meters. Now I can clip back this connector here. This is for the DISA Accutator, but my version does not have one. If you have the more powerful version, then you'll have another Accutator here that needs to be connected. But in my case, I can just clip it back like this. There's a clamp on the purge line that has to clip onto the manifold. Now I can connect the purge line. And another plastic clip is here on the side. Now I can reconnect the purge solenoid and the pressure sensor. Now I can reinstall this little bracket here. And the bolt has to be torqued to 15 newton meters. 
Now I need to reconnect the EGR hose and I'm also going to replace the gasket. First I'm just gonna try and bend it back into position. And then I'm going to get the bolt in together with the gasket. Bolts are back in and I have to torque them to 9 Newton meters. Now I can install the fuel line and I can also remove this 3D printed protective cap. Now I can reattach the hose by pressing down on the locking mechanism and pushing it over the lip. It's locked. The safety clip goes back on. I broke the plastic holder here, so I'm going to use a regular zip tie to secure it. Now I can reconnect the CCV hose. Now I can clip in the harness. Then I have to connect this one that goes to the distributing box on the engine. Here's how they have to be routed. So this one goes around and comes on the other side and this one goes here and down towards the bottom of the car. Manifold is finally in and now I can install the alternator. First I will have to connect this connector here and then I will also have to connect the positive lead cable. Now I can install the bolts. On the top side, the alternator has to be installed with this bracket. And then I can install the bolt. And the bolts have to be torqued to 19 Newton meters. Now I can install the plus terminal first onto this rubber holder here. And then I have to install the terminal and the nut. And I'm going to make this bolt hand tight. Approximately 10 Newton meters. And I have to connect the positive cable back to the jump cable terminal. And I have to torque the bolt to 13 Newton meters. And finally, I can put back the cover. Now I can install the belt and I have to pre-tension the tensioner and I'm going to do that by locking it with this pin. This pin comes with the timing kit, but you can use an Allen key or something similar. I'm going to use a 16 millimeter spanner and I'm going to engage the bolt on the tensioner and then I'm going to push it down. And when I'm in this position, I can insert the locking pin through the hole. I've made a mark on the belt so I can install it in the same direction of rotation. And if you accidentally switch it around, uh, you could develop some squeals or squeaks. I got the belt on and it has to go underneath this pulley here around the AC compressor and around the main pulley and then underneath the tensioner and over the alternator. Now I just have to get it on. Okay, it's on. Now I can release the tension. So now I can mount the airbox. And while I'm here, I also decided to replace the air filter. And this one is from BMW. Not sure about the year, but uh, I am sure that it's pretty clogged up. I mean, it's probably not critical, but still, while I'm here, I'm just going to replace it. Ladies and gentlemen, production date of this filter, 2012, December. This filter has been on the car probably 11 years. Oh man. Somebody really did not take good care of this car. Too bad. Shame, really. New filter in. Cover goes back on. 
First I'm going to reinstall this rubber bushing and then the airbox and I have to make sure that it sits on the rubber bushing. Then I can reattach the rubber boot to the throttle housing and then I can put back the clamp and make it tight. Then I can also reinstall the two 10 mm bolts and torque them to 10 Nm. Next I can reattach the wire harness and connect the throttle body and the mass airflow sensor and put back the grommet. Now I can reinstall the support struts and the left hand side goes in first. Then the right hand side. It goes over the top of the other side. And the M12 bolt. All three bolts need to be replaced according to the BMW manual and the front two have to be torqued to 40 newton meters plus 60 degrees and the center bolt needs to be torqued to 100 newton meters plus 100 degrees and another quick note you should definitely not drive the car without the reinforcement struts because you might damage the chassis cover goes on next uh, and it's a good idea to replace this because there's a gasket here and if this gasket leaks then you can get water ingress into this area of the car. Next the acoustic cover. It's a bit of a tight squeeze but it just clears the reinforcement strut and I have to secure it with the three screws. These are only hand tight. I've installed the gasket here and now I can also install this cabin filter housing carrier. It has to hook underneath here and it should just slide in. And then I have to install the two plastic rivets. Next I have to reattach the hood sensor. Next I have to reattach the wiring harness onto this carrier. This should just slide on. Carrier for the plus cable goes on next. And the cover. Next the cabin filter and the old one is nasty. Come on guys, don't do that people. So this one is trash and I got the new one here. This one is from Male, carbon activated. Oh yeah, much better. Unfortunately, BMWs are made out of very cheap plastics lately and two of the three clips already broke for the cabin filter. So I'm not sure how this is gonna work. And also here at the front, one of the attachments is already missing, so it broke off. Come on BMW, don't do that. There's a slot here in the middle and it has to engage with this piece here. Two 8 mm screws on each side, only hand tight. And two more screws here at the front, well in my case only one. No. Well the filter is not even secured in here, so I guess I'll have to replace this piece of garbage plastic. Side covers. Hooked here, now I just have to press it down and it should lock. And finally the intake duct.
and it has to be secured with the two Torx screws. And that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Consider liking and subscribing for more content like this on the BMW N43 engine. Keep Zen and continue the art of BMW maintenance.